Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, we've got to look at one verse. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. The title of the message is, Prayer is Missing in Your Life. Prayer is Missing in Your Life life. The Bible says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that man ought always to pray and to faint, and not to faint. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Yes, Christ, we thank you once again for allowing us to gather here to uh, sing unto you and to hear your word. We ask you that you'll fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit Give him the clarity of mind and thoughts and the ability to speak your words, to prick our hearts so that we can change our lives for the better. And fill us listeners with your Holy Spirit so that we, we will be attentive to your word. Protect us from devil's attacks and for those who aren't able to make it or who are on their way, we ask you that you'll be with them, watch over them, and help them to come safely or help them to come uh, next time. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Prayer is missing in your life. Prayer is a topic and a subject that has been discussed many, many times. There are many great books written about it. Uh, there's a lot of Bible studies. There's a lot of preachings on it. I'm not going to uh, harbor or beat down on the doctrine per se, but prayer is something that is definitely missing in many, many Christians' lives. It is something that is definitely needed. It is something that almost like oxygen to your Christian walk, but many Christians you know, forsake this life of prayer. Prayer is something that you need to do always. You know, the Bible says pray always, pray without ceasing. Prayer is speaking or talking to the Lord Jesus Christ. Literally, you're talking to God. And it's something that you, you ought to do always. We know Nehemiah prayer, right? Let's go to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 2. Nehemiah chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 3 and 4, Nehemiah prayer. Some of you might have heard of Nehemiah prayer. Nehemiah chapter 2. Let's look at verse 3. And the Bible says, And said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad, when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire. Then the king said unto me, For what dost thou make request? So king asked Nehemiah. So Nehemiah, what, what was his response? Did he answer the king right away? No. Nehemiah said, So I pray to the God of heaven. So that's Nehemiah prayer, like quick prayer. In any situation, in any moment, you ought to pray to God. A lot of times we don't do that. And whenever there's issues or whenever something comes up in our lives, do you actually go to the Lord right away? You know, do you take that few seconds of your time and pray to God? Whatever the matter is, whether you're talking to someone, whether you're in a situation where you have to do something, do you always, always pray to the Lord? before you do anything, before you answer anything. The reason you and I get into trouble in many of our aspects of our lives is because we don't go to the Lord in prayer all the time. We go to the prayer after the matter many times. That's the sad part. As Christians, as human beings, you go to the Lord after you fail. And a lot of times after you disappoint, 
after you lose and you go to the prayer, you know, Lord, you know, I'm sorry, Lord, I've done this wrong, Lord, you know, blah, blah, blah. And instead of prayer being a joyful, prayer being glory to God for the victory that you received, you go to the Lord as a you know, defeated person trying to get right, trying to reflect, trying to always be like, what ifs, right? What could have been done differently? Prayer essentially shows what kind of relationship you have with Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever talks to the Lord more, I guarantee, has a closer relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever does not talk to the Lord on a daily basis or doesn't talk to the Lord often enough, do not have and does not have closer relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. The whole purpose of you and I here on earth is to bring glory to God, but in order to do that, your standard and my standard is our relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. And the question becomes, do you have close relationship with Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, think about when you got saved. Think about those times when you are really, really close with Lord Jesus Christ. Are you at the same, I guess, level? Or are you closer to the Lord? Or are you farther away nowadays than the closest time you ever were with the Lord Jesus Christ? And what do you mean? How does that happen? You might ask. Whenever you do something, if you have close relation with Lord Jesus Christ, He'll be the first person you think about before you do anything. It's like this. When two people are in love, before they make any decision, they think about what other people would want, right? You know, we had, when a young couple got married during the week, you know, you pray for their trips, upcoming and everything, and rest of their lives. They have to make decisions together now. They don't make decisions on their own. Hopefully not, right? You know, and upcoming, you know, Brother Caleb as well. Because you love the person and you want to know what they think about. And you want to make decisions that will make them happy, right? Especially, you know, marriage ceremony and the first year or two of your marriage. As you get to know each other, you make sure that you think about what other people or what other person is thinking. But when you come to Christian walk, do you ever think about what the Lord would think about, right, before you do anything? Whenever you're in a situation, do you think about, you know, I mean, it's such a cliche, but, you know, what would Jesus do, right? I mean, do you even think about what the Lord would do in that situation? A lot of times, you and I might not even know the answer, and we don't even ask, and we just do it. And after we do it, you know, we get on our knees and say, Lord, you know, I'm so sorry. You know, we, it's, it's like a habitual thing. You and I need to realize and recognize that prayer, the most essential part of a believer, is really missing in our lives. How many of you guys can say that I pray enough? How many of you guys can say that I pray always? How many of you guys can say that, you know, prayer is dear to my heart and is part of my heart? How many of you guys can say that before I do anything, I pray? I mean, Nehemiah, I guarantee, before he did anything, he always prayed. But us... I don't know if that's the right answer or that would be the answer if you give an honest answer from the bottom of your heart. Prayer is really missing in Christians' lives where only prayer that a Christian does is like right before eating. Uh, that's like literally, that's the only time. And that's a very, very short prayer too, right? A lot of times, people don't even want to add in Jesus' name because they think it's too long, right? They're like, thank you for the food, amen, and then you just start chowing down, right? So it's sad that that's like the only time people pray. Unless you're in a bind, when you're in a, in a 
situation, hard situation, difficult situation, trouble times. And that only emphasizes how comfortable you are in your life without involving the Lord in every part of your life. Prayer essentially should be an act where you're worshiping and praising God always. However, you don't praise God always, and you don't worship God always. Then that tells you that you don't pray always. Then, you know, just being logical, if you don't praise God always, you don't worship God always, you don't pray to God always, then do you think you have right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ? Of course not. Then you have to really examine your heart and reflect today. What is causing me? You know, what is causing me not to pray? Why is prayer missing in my life? Why is it that I'm not close to the Lord like I used to be in the past? Then you have to examine where, what part of my life is it causing me trouble when it comes to spending more time with the Lord, when it comes to praying without ceasing? And one of the things is the things of the world is causing you to stray away from the Lord. It's causing you to stop praying. It's causing you to worry too much without involving the Lord. The things of the world, what are they? Right? Typical stuff. Right? Your work life, your financial life, right? your school life, and your relationship. And as you examine those things, if they are, if any of those things are giving you and get, putting you away from the time of prayer, then you have to really reconsider, is that thing right for me? For example, you have a job, and your job is great, gives you good money. However, it takes you away from a lot of things. You know, typically, you know, a lot of high-ranking executives, you know, even lawyers or you know, businessmen, you know, people who run restaurants, they're always on the job. Always and always. And to them, it's like most important thing in their life. However, if that thing, if your job is taking you away and is stopping you from having a right and close relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, where prayer is missing, and that's something that you could point to, right? I'm asking you to really point it out. Look at it, examine it. And you could definitely point out which section. If you could point out where, okay, I've done a lot of thinking, and this job that I have has been really bad for my relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, then you need to start praying that you get a different job that where you will have a closer relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not telling you to just quit the job. That's the that's not a smart thing to do and a wise thing to do. As you have your job and as you pray for, you know, maybe a job that will make you have a closer relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, then Lord will start opening the doors for you. However, if your attitude is, you know what, you know, I can't change, you know, this is what I have, this is the life I have, you know what, Lord, you know, this is best that I could do, and you just stop there, then nothing's ever going to change. Your prayer life will be same as where you are right now. And what is that? It's missing in your life. You're closer. You say, I want to have a closer relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. Then it all becomes just a talk, right? A lot of people are able to just talk the talk. You know, but many can do walk the walk. So you'll be just that talking Christian over there without any walking, no action. However, majority of the Christians are just all talk, though. You and I could have a conversation, and many of the things that we say we want to do for the Lord, we want to change for the Lord, it's just a talk. If you and I have a conversation, and we say 
and we actually follow up with what we say we're going to do for the Lord, man, we'll all be missionaries, all be, you know, pastors, we'll all be, you know, doing great and mighty things for the Lord. We'll be evangelizing, we'll be, you know, witnessing to thousands of souls out there. But that's not the case. We don't do that. Then you have to just recognize that, man, there's something wrong with my walk with Lord Jesus Christ right now. Because how many of you guys can honestly say that I have a perfect walk with Lord Jesus Christ at this moment? How many? Right? If you say, I do, man, brother or sister, you know, pride has gotten in your heart. You're very prideful. It's as if someone say, who's humble today? Who, who's full of humility today? And then, isn't it amazing? Someone's always about to raise their hand, and then they just drop it, realizing right away that, you know what, that's, that's pride getting in the way. Then it is the same thing. It's very important. I mean, how many of you guys think that you're praying enough? Right? And someone will be like raising their hand, they're like, you know what, I pray a lot. I pray like an hour or two. Good for you, brother, sister. But why don't you compare yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ? Why don't you compare yourself to George Mueller? Why don't you compare yourself to all these forefathers of faith? Why don't you compare yourself to Martin Luther? Right? You cannot be a person comparing your prayer life to someone who prays less than you. Your standard always should be Lord Jesus Christ. I mention it over and over because you and I can always find someone comparable to us, right? I mean, if you know that brother or sister is not is struggling spiritually, then if you compare yourself to that brother or sister, maybe you might look a little bit better, right? Because you actually come to church, you know, you do some stuff in the ministry. However, I mean, if you compare yourself to Lord Jesus Christ, then you're like a dirt, you know, you're like a dung, right? It's not something that's, you know, pleasant. Apostle Paul counted everything as a dung, right? You know, like everything, except what he does for Lord Jesus Christ. Then when you look at your job life, think about it. For some, like, Kids, you know, compared to your education, I'm never proponent of someone who just gives up everything and just doing, you know, just ministry. God doesn't bless it that way. Balance Christian life. You have to do your best. But is doing your best, you know, not enough for you to succeed in your job? Do you have to go above and beyond where you have to sacrifice other things? Then you have to reconsider. Again, don't quit anything and saying that, oh, yeah, you know, Pastor Jay said to quit my job and just start praying always, you know? No, never, right? You do best at what you're doing, but always you have to examine and reflect. Is that really good for me? If it's not, you do your best at whatever you're doing, wherever you are, and you continue to pray, and God will open doors. Because God sees that you want to have a closer relationship with him, then he'll open doors. However, if your heart goes, if your priority is like, you know what, I'm just happy where I am. You know, I get things paid for, I have family, and I go to church. That's enough for me. You know, I know that I'm going to fall into sin. Oh, well. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to just live like this the rest of my life, have a little bit of pleasure with the world, the devil, and flesh, you know, and then confess my sins and repent here and there. You know, never really close with the Lord Jesus Christ. And hopefully, you know, rapture happens and I'll just go to heaven. Just typical, typical. That is the mindset of majority of the Christians, unfortunately, right? You think where you are is the best and best you can do. 
And no one, no one, nobody, I mean, very few people want to do more for the Lord. And especially when you compare and see your prayer life, you can see where you are spiritually. That's all you have to do. You're like, hey, 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 preacher, how can I know if I'm right with the Lord? How can I know where I am spiritually? Oh, yeah? Just look at your prayer life. Honestly, you could go out and witness. You could go out and street preach for hours and hours, maybe every day. It's not going to work if you don't put time, if you don't spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's like there's no relationship. Think about it. It's a marriage. And say a husband is out there, wife is out there just working and working and working. So they make good money. They provide for the family. However, they have no relationship. They don't talk to each other, right? They just see each other in the morning and at night. Say, good morning, honey. Good night, honey. And then this goes on. Their kids are well fed. They live in a nice house. You know, they drive a nice car. But they don't have any relationship. They're not close. And what happens in those situations? When something goes wrong, it explodes. Like, and then that's where you know, splits happen. In your walk with you know, Lord Jesus Christ, for some gung-ho people that I know, I know you love witnessing, you love street preaching, you love passing out. That's all good and stuff. However, you need to have a balanced Christian life. Do you, do you pray to the Lord like how you witness, how you pray? how you put your effort in. If you are to, say, street preach and visitation and witnessing for like an hour, do you put another hour talking to the Lord Jesus Christ? Or is that that prayer, that lunch break or dinner break, right before meal, you pray to the Lord for a few seconds, maybe a minute, and that's the only prayer that you do. It is not going to work out well. Why? Because there's no balance to it. Right? You know, balanced Christianity is the most important thing. I mean, if all you're doing is doing things, action, but you don't pray, then there's no balance. It's going to break. That's why you have to talk to the Lord Jesus Christ on a regular basis. And it's not about only at home when you pray. A lot of people think, like, okay, I need a perfect setting to pray. You know, I can't have kids. I can't have, you know, spouses bothering me. You know, I need a perfect situation. I mean, it is good. I mean, in the morning, you know, you're, if you're by yourself, go to your closet or next to your bed and just kneel down and pray. Hey, that's good for you. However, Bible says, you know, 1 Timothy 2.8, it says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Just like Nehemiah prayer, you have to pray everywhere, whether you're at work whether you're at school, whether you're at market, anywhere, you ought to pray. There's no limitation where to pray. I mean, sometimes people think that I am limited when I'm praying. It's not always about praying at home. It's not always about praying at the church. It's not always about praying at a specific place. You have to be able to pray everywhere, right? When you're driving, you should be praying, right? When you're eating, you should be praying. When you're walking, you should be praying, exercising. You ought to be praying everywhere and always. When was the last time do you truly feel that, man, my prayer life is where I wanted it to be? It will never reach the level that you ought to until the day of the rapture, until you die. You're going to work towards the goal. But when was last time you felt like, man, you know, I feel pretty close to the Lord. You know, I really am getting closer to the Lord. This is exciting because I am getting to know more about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I'm talking to him more, right? It's very simple. How do you get to know each other more? By conversing with each other more, Right? I mean, if I want to know about, you know, say, Nathan, 
I, I'm not going to know everything by just looking at him. Right? I'll have to actually talk to him. Like, you know, your school, or what are you doing with homework? You know, are you behaving well, right? How are you, you know, behaving with your siblings? You know, what do you like to do, right? What do you not like to do? Do you have any allergies, right? And what if you have peanut al allergy? Not give him a peanut butter, you know. Here, eat it. He'll be like, hey, 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 I don't want it. I'm going to have, I'm going to, I might die. Yeah. In order for you to know more about a, another person, you actually have to take time to talk to that person. How much do you know about Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, that's the question. You say he's my savior. He saved me from hell. He's my friend. He lives in me. And I'll see him one day. Then how much do you know more? How much really do you know about Lord Jesus Christ? Obviously, you won't know too much about him if you don't talk to him on a daily basis. Right? Did you talk to him today? Did you talk to him yesterday? Did you talk to him the day before? Did you even talk to him this week at all? Or are you just the type that takes everything for granted and you neglect your prayer life and just go on with your life. Then what's going to happen? When trouble hits the fan, when something does not go right and stuff, what are you going to do? Do you think your faith will withstand all those things coming your way when devil attacks you constantly? You're, not, you're going to lose. Devil is already happy. Devil, when looking at many of your Christian walk with the Lord, Devil's really happy. He's like, I don't really have much to do. You know, I done my job. You know, you barely spend any time in prayer, so I don't care. You know, I'm just gonna leave you alone. I'm gonna start going after those other fishes out there, where who's on their knees or who wherever they are, they're just spending time with the Lord. Man, I hate those people. I don't like them. You know, they're very powerful. Why? Because they have closer relation with the Lord, and their prayer is really important. And it's really something that could make changes in people's lives, especially lost people out there. When you look at your prayer life, right? First of all, again, if anything's taking your time away from prayer, time and life and effort, examine. Okay, does something need to change in my life, right? If it does, you know, don't quit. Do your best at whatever you're doing. Ask God for another opportunity or different doors to open so that you could spend more time with the Lord. Afterwards, think about, you know, how important do you treat prayer in your heart? Lost souls out there. It's given for many people, especially saved Christians, because you and I are saved from hell. You know, we value lost souls. Very important. It's dear to our heart. However, where does prayer stand in your heart? Right? Where is prayer in your heart? Is that a priority? Or is that something, you know, it's like way down there. You don't really think about it much. Because you already know the importance of prayer doctrinally. And you know the importance of prayer in your spiritual life. So it's not something new to you. It's something that you've heard over and over and over. But however, how important is it? It's like you're telling a child, hey, wash your hand after you play outside because it is important. Because you, you're gonna, you don't want to catch germs. You don't want to get sick. For some kids, it's very important. They value it. So they come home, they wash their hand all the time. However, for some kids, they don't care. They're not going to wash their hand until they were told to do it or until they get sick, you know, until they catch cold or flu or something worse. When it comes to prayer life, where is it? Is that like something that, you know, when you priority of washing your hand, like you have to do it all the time? Or is that something like you do it 
only after you get sick, right? Because you haven't washed your hand enough. If you do not pray, if you do not pray always, and if you do not pray everywhere, rest of your spiritual life will suffer. Only thing that's happening, if you're not praying, but you think your life is okay spiritually, that means you're walking on the edge of the cliff. You're right before about to fall off the cliff. It's like you're like walking right here. Like, okay, you know, Lord's still blessing me, I think, and I'm still doing something. You know, things are okay. Why, do I, why should I pray? So you don't pray. And suddenly, you know, you fall. You're, you fall off the cliff. And then you could trace it back to, why did that happen to me? Right? Oh, I really did not pray. I didn't pray. Like my, there were prayer life was missing, right? And prayer was missing in my life. And it dawned on me, like, okay, you say you want to be a man of prayer, but when you reflect on your past one week or two, I mean, did I really pray like I ought to in every situation? Like, no, I didn't. Then you have chance to actually really change. You're like, man, you know, I'm not a man of prayer, but I want to be. I'm not a, you could say I'm not a woman of prayer, but I want to be. You know, I have to take it more seriously. I have to put this as priority in my life, right? If you thought of prayer like money, many of you guys will be a prayer warriors. You know, unfortunately, that's the thing. Right? And uh, if you value prayer like money and your finances, man, you know, I could barely see you guys walking because you'll be on your knees all the time. Can you imagine if you make money by being in a prayer position? How many of you guys be in that prayer position? Right? Not for eight hours. Probably you guys want to make more and more and more. You know, say if you're in a prayer position for eight hours, for, you know, say 2,080 hours, which is the work week, normal work, work hours for a year, you would do a lot more, I guarantee you, because money is that important to you. But however, what about prayer? I mean, to, prayer is priceless, right? Through prayers, things get done. Through prayer, you know, like mountains move, as they say, right? Impossible things happen. I mean, we pray for Pastor Shrive, right? We pray for many of the, you know, our loved ones who's going through physical illness, right? How many of you guys are truly praying for them? How many of you guys think that those Prayers are more important than your money. That's the first question probably you should get it out of the way. I mean, is prayer really more important to me than money? I mean, money is root, love of money is root of all evil. That's, there's reason why, right? Because when you think about evil, wow, root of evil is love of money. So, you know, there's a significant to love of money there. Then, do you love money more than prayer? No, don't just answer, and don't raise your hand either, right? Do you think about money more than prayer? I mean, that's an that's a honest, simple question. And when I'm talking about money, it relates to everything that's involving money. Your job, right? You know? Feeding your family, you know, paying for mortgage, rent, car payment, you know, everything that's involved with money. Do you think about that more than prayer? Think about it. Think about your life. Even kids, why do you study anyways, right? Because you want to get a job where you make money. 
can support your family, future family, right? Then, when it comes to your money and prayer life, if you weigh it, which one weigh heavier in your life? Nine out of 10 people, I'm very conservative, right? It should be 99 out of 100. Nine out of 10, they think about things like money more than prayer. And it shows in their life, right? Don't get me wrong. You know, you need money to survive in this world. So you work hard for it. However, that shouldn't consume your life where you don't even think about prayer, where you don't even think about spending time with Lord Jesus Christ. You wake up thinking about money. You go to sleep thinking about money. I mean, that is not a Christian walk. That's not how Christians should live. That is very pitiful. That is very, how should I say, loser Christian life. Because you're losing every day thinking like that. How can you become a victorious Christian when all your mind is at things of the world like money instead of your mind being on Lord Jesus Christ? How much time am I going to spend with him? I want to know more about him. I want him to talk to me more through the word of God. And I want to get closer to him. Then when you pray, prayer doesn't become like work. It doesn't become like chore. It doesn't become like, you know, some workout, right? Uh, like those hard workout. It's not. It becomes like part of your life. It's part of life that you love to do. We have a bunch of people in this congregation right now. How many of you guys really love to pray on your knees, right? You know, it's like you like to do that more than eating your food. How many of you guys truly feel like that? Have you ever felt like that? I mean, I guess that should be the first question. Have you ever felt like prayer proceeds anything in my life, right? Because that's actually talking to Lord Jesus Christ, that's actually you're building relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, and that's actually you're getting closer to Lord Jesus Christ because your personal relationship is happening. When was the last time or if ever was that your number one priority? Right? You think about prayer, but you don't think about Lord Jesus Christ. You think about prayer, you don't think about getting closer to Lord Jesus Christ. You think about prayer, and it's all about you getting something from the Lord. It's not about you growing as Christians. The prayers that you pray, think about it. Did you pray to God for this, for that, A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Did you ever have a, like a deeper prayer with the Lord? discussing things that happen in his life, in the word of God, discussing some, you know, his second coming, discussing what happened, you know, in Samuel and Chronicles and what happened in, you know, minor prophet. Your prayer will only be as deep as how much you spend time with the Lord and how much you spend time with the word of God. You talking to the Lord and Lord talking to you. That's why many people struggle to pray more than five minutes. Because they don't know what to pray. You don't know what to pray. Because there's no knowledge in you. Because you don't know anything about the Word of God. You don't spend time with the Lord. So how do you think you could have a long conversation with the Lord? It's like this. If I don't know much about, say, someone I'm going to marry, how am I going to have a long discussion? Right? It's got to be short. Did you eat? What food do you like? And where do you want to go? And then like just, you know, superficial stuff. But if you get to really know that person, you know their important things and priorities, even their hurts in the past, you know, what their, you know, things that move them emotionally, you know, what hurts them mentally, and then what brings them joy spiritually. But in your prayer life, none of this is present. Why? Because you don't think prayer is important in your life. Because you don't treat it more important than money or anything else in your life. That is why prayer is missing in your 
life. And if you go on living like that as a Christian, where prayer is missing, you'll never enjoy fully the joy that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll never really enjoy the Word of God. You'll never enjoy the ministry like you ought to. You'll never get really closer to the brethren. You don't even pray for them. Don't expect to get closer to each other. And I'll park it right here. You know, Apostle Paul said, brethren, you know, pray for us. Right? So, as a brothers and sisters in Christ, you should pray for each other. Right? When was the last time you prayed for all of these, you know, your brothers and sisters in Christ in this, in this room only? In this room. Like you mentioned everybody in your prayer. Maybe not even for like 10 seconds, but even like at least for like a few seconds, you know. Like, you know, I pray for like Isaac and Timothy, you know. You know, I pray for, you know, Sister Jen, Brother Richard, you know, Sister Tracy. Like on and on. When was the last time you even pray for each other? I know you don't because you don't even know each other's name fully. Because you never really got to talk to each other. I mean, it just tells you where your spiritual state is. Don't think that these things you could get away with. It's a command. It's imperative. Pray without ceasing. Lord did not say, pray when you want. Pray when you feel like it. Lord said, pray without ceasing. No? I mean, the verse that we read, man ought always to pray and not to faint. Where is prayer in your life? What priority does prayer take in your life? Will it be number one in your life from now on? Would you replace it with your money? Would you let everything else go by side? I mean, and then just go, you know what? I figured this and I thought this wrong all this time. You know, having material possession will not make you happy, right? Having a lot of friends will not make me happy, right? You know, winning a lot of souls and street preaching, it makes me happy. But it won't matter unless I have close and right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. It won't matter unless I continue to talk to the Lord every single day, every single moment. Where would you end up? Would you be that person who got closer to the Lord Jesus Christ or that person who fell further and further away? Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for the word of God and thank you for saving us from hell. And Lord, it is such a redundant topic. It's talked about many, many times, but we obviously neglect it many, many times the prayer life, Lord. It's definitely missing in many, many Christians' lives, Lord. I pray that we'll take it seriously. Think about the importance of prayer. Think about spending time with you, talking to you, Lord, on a daily basis, all the time, Lord. Help us to truly get closer to you, Lord, and help us to make sure that prayer takes precedence before all this money or material things, Lord God. Help us to really get closer to you and help us to really become a better Christian that prays, Lord. I pray that you'll be with everyone, Lord. Protect us from devil's attacks, especially all these crazy things going on with pandemic, Lord. And keep people healthy, Lord. And any, anyone who's going through physical illness, Lord God, please heal them as soon as possible. We pray for Pastor Shrive and his upcoming surgery, Lord. Please be with the doctors and please be with him and the family. We pray that you know, he'll be healed according to your will, Lord God. And please comfort him and give him encouragement, Lord God. And I pray that you bless the rest of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, everyone.